Okay, we're gonna take a look at the sculpting tools in Blender today. We're using Blender 3.3. And I've got a new general drawing started. So I've got my default cube. And the first thing I wanna show you is with the cube selected, if I go into sculpt mode and use that first sculpting tool and just draw on my cube, nothing happens. And the reason for that is, if I go to wireframe, um, and edit mode might be nice so I can highlight those vertices. The sculpt mode uses the vertices of your drawing. So I've only got four on each face right now, which doesn't give me much to be able to work with in sculpt mode. So I need more vertices if I want to sculpt, which of course means be careful because if you have too many vertices, you're going to crash your computer. You don't want too dense of a mesh. So there are a couple of ways to do it. One would be... Go back into object mode and add the subdivision surface modifier on your cube. You can see it turns into a little ball. And if we apply that modifier, we have more edges. Um, that's not very many as far as vertices go for, the, for sculpting purposes. So if I want to do that, a better number is probably four or five and then apply it. And now you can see we just got a lot more dents. And now we've got some vertices we can move around with the sculpting tool. Another thing you could do, let me just undo all of that, is in edit mode, you can always select all, right click and choose subdivide and go down here. Change your number to 10 and then right click and subdivide again and change your number to 10. And uh, now you're really dense. That might have been a little too much. Maybe I should back that off to five. That looks a little bit better. Um, so either way, you're going to get more vertices to work with in the sculpting tools there. So now if I jump over to sculpt and go back into um, shaded mode and just start drawing, now you can see I've got something happening when I'm sculpting. And that thing is happening because the mesh is moving as I move my sculpt tools around. So if we jump into wireframe mode again, you can see that the mesh hasn't changed as far as the number of vertices. It's just moving those vertices around to create a new shape. Um, so I'm going to create a new file again just to show you. There's another way to get into sculpting, and that is you can just straight up choose sculpting. And if you do that and use that first tool again and just start brushing, you've already been started with a sphere that is... Um, subdivided enough that you have a mesh to work with. Um, so if we go to wireframe, you can see what that is. Um, now, just to uh, give you some other meshing options right off the bat, there's a remesh button up here, and there's a dyno topo option up here. That's dynamic topography. Um, both of these change the density of your mesh. And there are times when you're going to need to use either one of these or maybe both and so just to show you quickly on this mesh what remesh will do it currently says that our voxel size is 0 0.035 if i change that to 0 0.01 and then hit remesh it recalculates the density of uh, vertices inside of our model and that's how much we have to work with now um now that's great. I mean, for sculpting, you can do some detailed stuff when your vertices are that small. At the same time, you've just given your computer that many more vertices to work with. So everything about what you're doing is about to move a whole lot slower. Um, and also, it really does mean you have to move a lot of vertices to make things happen. So big changes are harder to make if you have a very, very dense mesh, a small voxel size. Whereas if we get 10 times bigger, 0.1, big changes are easier to make and your computer has less to think about because there are less vertices involved in making this shape. Um, so usually, no, I'm going to say always, start big and then go small as you need to. Uh, because if you go small and then you use remesh to go big, you're going to lose a lot of your detail. Um, you're going to end up re-sculpting large areas of your project. It is possible to do it, but it's destructive when you do it. Another thing to keep in mind, I'm going to go into wireframe mode here again, dynamic topography. If you turn that on and you can adjust your detail size here, 
But if you turn that on, what's going to happen is as you sculpt, it will add additional vertices as necessary. So that's how many vertices I got at this zoom level. If I zoom in some more and start sculpting, notice we're adding more vertices. If I zoom in more, we're adding more vertices. So these faces are dynamically sized based on how far I'm zoomed in. So I can make a denser and denser mesh. Uh-oh. My computer just slowed down. Um, by zooming in and sculpting with dynamic topography turned on. That can be good for doing some detail work on a mesh that otherwise stays fairly large and flexible. Um, so you can get some small detail areas without having your computer deal with millions and millions of vertices. Uh, for now, I'm going to turn that off. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to go back to a new sculptor. I'm going to sculpture here. Don't save. There we go. And I am going to remesh this a little bit. 0 0.02. All right. So it's a little denser. And it will show some of these tools. So here are the sculpting tools on the left. If you grab this edge, you can pull it out so you get two rows. If you only have one, you have to scroll up and down to get them all. We're only going to go through a few of these, the ones you're going to use all the time. If you keep pulling out, you'll get names next to them, which could be ha uh, handy at first until you get to know them. So the draw tool draws a stripe of clay on your object. If you hold down control, you can reverse almost all of these tools. So I'm going to draw while holding control. You can see that got reversed. I'm going to use the draw sharp and I'm going to do the same thing. And it tries to put a sharp edge down If I hold control. It's going to try to put a sharp edge up. If I go to clay, it's going to add a bunch of clay to that spot. Hold down control. It's going to try to remove a bunch of clay from that spot. If I go to clay strips, it's going to do it only with more of a like squared off edge. Same idea with control. If I go to clay thumb, it's like dragging a thumb through the clay. And if I hold down control on this one, this is one of the few that doesn't get reversed. It's like pushing your thumb in even harder. Um, but almost, well, it sort of gets reversed. Okay, imagine your thumb. So I pulled this way, right? So I'm pushing the clay in this direction. Well, I pulled down when I held down control, but the lump of clay is at this end. So it almost reverses the direction. It's kind of weird. If I go to layer, I can add a layer. So it's kind of like the clay strips um, or the clay over here. And control, I can get rid of that or do the reverse of that. If I go to inflate, I'm going to blow up an area here or control dent an area in. If I go to blob, similar, but we're doing it by adding more clay. So it's a little faster than inflate. So that was the control. If I go to crease, there I am carving a crease into the clay, or if I hold down control, building a crease up out of the clay. If I go to smooth, I can smooth over some of these edges and try to make everything just a little bit softer. Now, here's a fun thing about smooth. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to pick layer. You know what layer does. I'm going to hold down shift and keep brushing. It just smoothed it right out. So I'm using the smooth tool by holding down shift, even though I'm inside of another tool. That is something you can do with pretty much every tool in here is you shift and just start brushing and you're automatically in the smooth tool. Let go of shift and start brushing again. You're back to where you were. So that's just a handy shortcut because smooth is used so often. When you hold shift and use smooth, it uses whatever settings were applied to the smooth brush. So you have a radius and a strength here and you can adjust those to change how your brush is working. Um, I don't typically use these sliders. I will typically just use F on my keyboard because if you press F and then move right or left, you can change the size of your brush. So I can make a very big brush now. Um, and if you hold Shift F, you can change the strength of your brush. So a very weak brush, 0.1, or a very strong brush, Shift F again, 1.0. And so you can get more effect that way. Let me make that smaller again. If I go to Flatten, you can, if you scrub over an area long enough, try to flatten that area out. Uh, a little hard to see since 
there's not much to flatten in those areas. There we go. I'm going to flatten that out. If I go to fill, I'm going to fill in any low spots or try to. So be careful how careful you are at clicking. And it tries to do it without raising up any of the areas around the low spot. So I can try to fill that crease without changing the geometry too much around the crease. If I go to scrape, I am scraping something over the surface of the clay, removing a little bit of clay, hold down control, reverse that effect. So it's almost like um, the clay or the clay strips up here or the layer. Uh, Multiplane is a tool I don't use very often, but um, it like works on, you can see it's working on multiple planes. It's keeping that edge where it is. And I can hold control and kind of invert that. So it's an interesting tool and it sort of changes with the contour of the, the shape you're working with. Pinch is a little easier to understand. It just takes something like this ridge line here and pinches it in to make it sharper. You can see what I got there. Grab lets you grab a part and pull it out and move it. Now keep in mind as I'm doing that, I'm stretching these faces. Um, so there's only so far you can go before your faces are so big um, they're really not any good to work with anymore. You've you've maxed out. So that may be a great time to have dynamic topography turned on, or that may mean that you are setting yourself up to have to remesh your model to get some more vertices back in here so you can keep going. Um, if I go down to elastic deform, it's kind of like grab, only it's a little less destructive. It, it pulls more material around the area you grab. So you're able to um, move larger parts of your drawing and have them all feel connected. If I go to snake hook, it's actually kind of the opposite. It grabs a small area and just pulls it out. Uh, if I go to the thumb, we're looking at a similar effect as what we had before, but only for just moving things around. We're not really carving in. We're just pushing on our clay and shoving it in a given direction. Um, and we're going to ignore most of the rest of these for now we won't need them right off the bat i will point out mask which is kind of handy there are several mask tools here but what that does is it lets you i really should have set my um, strength to one there let me undo that shift f set my strength to one mask that out it lets you mask off an area that you don't want to change because of other effects and so now i'm going to grab like blob and I'm going to build around that masked area. And look, the masked area does not change. It's trying to stay unaffected by the other tools. And so that's a way to protect something that you don't want changing. I can then go back to mask. And I might press F and go with a bigger brush. And just hold down shift. Oh, not shift. Sorry, control to reverse the mask. And just scrub that away. Um, or even go change that with like the box mask. And hold down the control and... Just select it like that so the whole thing is not boxed in, or I can easily box something in. Oops, missed it. There we go. So that's it for your intro to the basic sculpting tools, and that should get you started.